Good morning, people. How are you? See, Sarah, if you started this, you clap and they're like, I love you back. That is, you are wonderful. All of you are wonderful. So, good morning. You know what? It is officially summer. It finally came. This was the first week of summer. How many kids just were like, I'm so glad to be done with school? Yes. Man, I remember as a kid, I, I loved, because it was like, as soon as summer hit, man, it was going to be, we're swimming, we're playing, we're camping. I mean, all that stuff is what makes summer so amazing. And yet, uh, I want to challenge us today, since again, it's a holiday weekend, we have all the kids in here. Uh, I want to challenge us to look at this summer and think, how can I see God both in the world and in the Word. That's what we're going to be talking about this morning. And so I want to pray right now, get us sort of set up for what we have today. It's just going to be a little bit of time. We're going to be looking at some stuff from David. I think it's going to be a little bit of fun in the process. But I want us to start kind of shifting those gears to say, hey, summer's here. Summer's awesome. Summer's fun. But summer's an opportunity as well for us to connect with God in maybe some different ways. And so let's go ahead and pray together. Jesus, I thank you for today. I thank you for the opportunity we have to look at your word, to look at this particular section of the Bible and see what it is that you have for us, to see how we can see you more in the context of our summer. And so I pray that we would have fun, but more importantly, I pray that we would grow hungry, hungry to experience you, hungry to see you, hungry to enjoy you. And so we thank you so much for today. We love you so much and we praise you in your good and awesome name. Amen. All right, so everybody, when you came in this morning, for you awesome kids in the room, you have your own set of notes right here, all right? And here's what's cool about these notes is I'm talking this morning, uh, you have some key words that you might want to listen for. And anytime I reference one of these words, you can put a little line next to that with a crayon. You can just hashtag, right? So uh, you can say, oh, he said Lord. And so you can put a little mark. So when I say Lord, you can put a mark. When I say Lord, 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 you, you can put marks. So every time I say Lord, you want to put a mark. That's another Lord, so put a mark. And that was a Lord too. So, and a Lord, I get it, okay. All right. So you can do that. You can talk about what you learned when you were listening. You have a little picture that you can draw down here in the corner. And here's the thing. After we're done, I'm always out there at the front door, right? And I'm saying goodbye to everybody as they leave. Uh, but if you come and show me your notes, I'm going to give you a smarty because you're all smarties. All right? So we're incentivizing your note taking, all right? So... Parents on our app, there are notes for you as well. And so if you want Smarties, you can come to me <laughs> with your on-app notes and say, I took my notes and I will give you a Smartie too because you're so smart, you parents. So anyway, I want you right now, if you have a Bible, a Bible app, or if you're going to be using our online notes there in the app, uh, you can see it there. But we're going to be looking at Psalm 19 this morning. We are out of our current series that Jesus saved us to be a culture. Uh, we're kind of taking a break because it is the 4th of July weekend. And uh, we have the kids in the room with us. And so we thought we'd do something a little bit different. And so we're looking at Psalm 19. This is one of my favorite psalms in all of David's songwriting. Right? And, and I love it because I love the heart and spirit behind it. Because again, it captures this idea of word and world all together in one thing. Now, to understand this guy that wrote it, his name was David. David was a king. He was the guy that took out that big, tall dude, Goliath, right? And becomes king. And he was an REI kind of guy. He liked to camp a lot. He was outdoorsy, right? Very outdoorsy guy. Spent a lot of his childhood in the outdoors. Loved to talk about the outdoors. And so even in this particular little song that he writes, he's talking about the outdoors. And in our notes, what we want to see this morning as we think about our summer and what we want to do with our summer is that we want to use this summer to celebrate God's glory in the world. That's our first point. We want to use this summer to celebrate God's glory in the world. It starts off in Psalm chapter 19, says this. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the skies above proclaim his handiwork. 
day to day, it pours out speech, and night to night, it reveals knowledge. See, when we have finally pressed into summer and we can go outside and it's not just cloudy and it's not just rainy, we have this opportunity to look around and everywhere we look, we see that God is amazing and God is creative and God is clever and God is fun and God is whimsical. Everywhere you look this summer, if you go camping with your mom and dad and you go up to the Cascade Mountains, you can see just how amazing God is as he carved out those mountains. And you can see his glory. His glory means God is weighty, God is powerful, God is strong. Or maybe some of you are going to go to the ocean. How many love the ocean? Love the ocean. Right, And when you're there on the beach or you're playing with the little creatures in the tidal pools, that's an opportunity for you to think about, wow, God had to really like come up with some pretty amazing things to create all that you see. Maybe you're going to go to the aquarium. How many love the aquarium here in Seattle? Love the aquarium, right? Have you ever heard about how that, that octopus actually got out one time and just started cruising around the place? Can you imagine like if you were the the custodian that walked in the next morning, you find an octopus just in the corner hanging out, be a little freaky, right? But but God made all of that. And, And so when we go out, when we sit under the stars, whatever it is you do this summer, right, wherever you go play, you want to stop and say, well, everything that I see proclaims God's goodness, God's glory, His love, his joy, his fun. The Lord loves to do that. By the way, put a hash. I said Lord, all right? The Lord loves to create. And much of why he created is so we could then look at all of that and say, man, that's impressive, all that he has done. But I want you to also understand the reason that he did it is because he's trying to tell us about himself. That's why it says that all of that pours out speech and reveals knowledge. Now here's the weird thing to me about reading that. I, I look and I go, okay, so let me get this straight. Um, when I go on my back porch and I'm looking at all the trees in my backyard, um, you're trying to tell me that the trees are speaking to me? I mean, is this Lord of the Rings? Right? Oh, wise Mr. Gamgee! Right? I mean, it's like, do my trees do that? Now, my trees don't speak in that way, just as much as the hummingbird that comes onto my porch. There's these hummingbirds that come every day, and they feed on this big, kind of flowery plant on our porch. Uh, They don't explain to me the wonder of flight. right? They don't tell me those words. But somehow here it says, they teach, they gush, literally, they gush speech and knowledge. In fact, it goes on to say, There is no speech, nor are there words whose voice is not heard. The voice of theirs go out through all the earth, their words to the end of the world. And so you go, well, wait, how does then the ocean and streams and stars and the moon, which is a half moon right now, how how does it speak without words? Let me see if I can help you kids in the room to understand how God's creation speaks without words. Uh, How many of you like books? A few of you. How many of you like books that are only pictures? Oh, yeah. How many of you like books that are only pictures, but when you open them, they're 3D, they pop up books, pop up picture books? Best of all, right? Best of all. And this is what God did for us. He says, I have written the most epic, awesome, amazing pop up picture book ever. It's called Everything You See Around You, it's God's pop up picture book. And so when you go out this summer, and you're playing in the yard, or you take a trip someplace fun, and you see all of these places maybe you've never seen before, I want you to keep that in your mind, that this is how God is able to tell me about himself. This is his giant pop-up picture book. Right? And it tells me that he's good. It tells me the Lord is clever, and creative, and fun, and artistic, He loves color, and he loves sound, and he loves sight. He loves smell. Every once in a while, you know what you need to do? There's the saying that adults use, but you kids could really learn it. We say, every once in a while, you have to stop and smell the roses. But do that. Stop and smell flowers and say, wow, God loves all sorts of different scent. 
right? You're going to smell some flowers. You're going to be like, whew, that stinks, but God thought that was fun, um, right? But this is all of the ways that we can see that God is good in our lives. So my homework assignment for you this summer is to just take some time to put a blanket out on your grass and just look up at the night sky. Just look up at the night sky, like our video that we just showed. God is so big. I mean, it's such a big universe. And just, just look at the stars and listen to the birds and just soak it all in. And as you do that, just say, God, thank you. Thank you for all you've given, all that you've done, all that you've created to show us who you are. Thank you for your big pop-up book. Because that's how we can see him. Now that one's going to be easy for us this summer. Right? Looking at God in the world. But there's another thing I want us to do as well. And that is also this summer to soak in God's grace through the word. As much as we want to see God's glory in the world, we want to take some time to soak in God's grace from the Bible. From the word, right? And, and I say this because I know what it's like in summertime, right? It's very easy to get busy doing a lot of things because the sun doesn't set till three in the morning, right? Here in the Northwest. I remember like when I first moved here from Arizona, you know, Arizona, it sets at six. And I came here and I'm like, I'm like in Alaska, I'm at the North Pole. This thing never goes down in June, you know? And so the days are long and they're fun and we play and we have a good time. But sometimes it's very easy because we're so busy doing that to lose sight of kind of getting some of our encouragement from taking time to listen to the Bible or read our children's Bibles, whatever they might be, right? To hear from the Lord in the way that he talks there. Because God loves to talk to us in stereo, right? The stereo is the world and the word. He communicates in both into our lives. And so David, as he's writing this song, celebrates, man, I see God all over my world, but I also see God in the word, right? Yelling, screaming, blaring, enjoying in stereo. And so this is what David goes on to write. He says, the law of the Lord is perfect, It's perfect, and it revives the soul. This word perfect here means without bumps. You ever been down a bumpy road or a bumpy highway? At first, it's fun. For the first five minutes, you're like, this is awesome, right? And then after five minutes, you're like, this is old. I don't want to do it anymore. Bumpy roads are hard, and life sometimes can be bumpy, and yet what David says is, man, I know bumpy, I've lived bumpy, but what I've found is when I listen to the Bible, when I pay attention to the Word of God, when I listen to His laws and His commands and His decrees, man, that keeps things smoother. It's not so bumpy in life. And so we want to even say, as kids to our moms and dads, hey, can we read a Bible story every once in a while? Hey, can we talk about something I learned in Sunday school? Keep that conversation alive this summer because, man, that smooths out the things of life better, right? It revives, it says. It revives the soul. It reminds me of the, some of the flowers on my porch. Uh, my daughter's getting married in about three weeks And we've been so busy, we haven't had a chance to water, and it hasn't been raining much, and so all the flowers are looking like this on our porch, right? And and, and so we give them water. You come out the next day, and they're like, woohoo, we're strong again, right? We we got water, and so it revives them. And so this is what God's word does for us. It revives our hearts and souls. The next thing David says about this is that the testimony of the Lord is sure Making wise the simple. That word sure means trustworthy. Uh, This reminds me of when I was a kid. I grew up, like I said, in Arizona. And I grew up in a little town in central Arizona. And we had a place that we would go swimming in the summer. It was called Dry Beaver Creek, which does not sound like you could swim in it. Dry Beaver Creek. 
but, but when the snow would melt from Flagstaff and, and the rains would be in the, kind of the, it, there in spring, it would fill up dry Beaver Creek and make it wet Beaver Creek at least for a few months. And they would fill up these pools of water and we would go and swim in those until they would dry up and it was really fun. And one year we went down and found this really awesome pool and we decided we were going to put in a rope swing. Right? And so we tied it up in the tree. We climbed up there because mom wasn't there. Otherwise, she would have said, don't do that. And, and so we climbed up there because we were pretty young. And it was awesome. Right? Well, then we came back next summer. And every year when the floods would come, it would change all of those swimming pools that you could go in. And so uh, it, it was all full of boulders. It wasn't deep anymore. It was like a foot of water, but the rope swing was still there. Right? And so we're like, well, we can't go into the water, but we could still use the rope swing. And then one of the smarter kids with us said, do you think it's still safe? To which I said, I don't know. But we'll get my little brother Adam to try. <laughs> so we took Adam. Adam, swing out on the rope swing. Adam swings out on the rope swing. He's way out there. Snap. And just snapped right off. Just whoosh, And lands in this foot of water in the boulders. And uh, we, were, we felt bad, but glad it wasn't us. And... And that's when we knew it wasn't trustworthy, all right? <laughs> wasn't sure at all, right? And, and, and so this is where, again, what David says is, you know, there's a lot of things in life that aren't sure and aren't trustworthy and you're not positive. He says, but God's word is not one of those things that you have to worry about. God's word is always sure. It's always reliable. And it can take even the simplest person and cause them to be wise and smart and thoughtful. And so this is why we want to be people not only seeing God in the world, but also seeing God in the word. Our friend David also says this, the precepts of the Lord are right, right? And they rejoice the heart. This one reminds me of camping here in the Northwest, especially when you go in like spring or early summer, because summer doesn't start till July 5th. We all know that, right? Not really. And, and so you might go in June like, oh man, we're going to camp. It's going to be awesome. And then you go and what happens? At about four o'clock, it starts to rain. And you get cold, and you get wet, and you get miserable. And then you go into your tent, and you're damp and you're cold and you're miserable and you're wet. And you can't wait for morning. Right? And, and, and then it clears overnight, so it gets even colder, and so then you're shivering and everything else. But then the sun creeps up there again because it's the northwest at like 3 a.m. again. Um, goes down for a half an hour and comes right back up. So, and, and it creeps up, and you feel those rays of sun coming through the tent, and you go out of your tent, and you just stand in the sun. You're like, oh, it's so glorious. It's so warm. It feels so good. It's still only 42 degrees outside, right? But in the northwest for us, that's like 95, right? Especially when you've been cold. So, oh, you're just standing in the rays of the sun, and it just, oh, everything feels so good. Here's what I love about this. When he says the precepts of the Lord are right, that word is a word used by the people that originally wrote this, the Israelites. It's a Hebrew word that literally has this idea of rays of sun. The, 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 the precepts of the Lord are like rays of sun and they rejoice the heart. Just like when you go camping and you've been so cold and shivery and tired and then you feel it and you just, ah, just re relieves you. Well, that is what the Bible does for us. When we live by it and when we love it, it relieves our lives and our burdens. He also says the commandments of the Lord are pure and they enlighten the eyes. See, here's the thing. God didn't give us rules to hurt us, but to help us, right? He says, I'm going to give you the Bible here because I care about you, not because I don't care about you. I want your life to be the best life you could have, not the worst life you could have. And so I've, I've put these warnings here, and I've given you permissions <clears throat> so that you go, man, life is great when I do this. All rules in life are there to help us, not to hurt us. I think about this a few years ago. We went to Universal Studios in Florida, my whole family. And uh, we were leaving one night, and uh, my, my son was kind of ahead of us. And there's, at Universal Studios, there's these big conveyor belts for human beings that take you all over the place. You just kind of stand on it like at the airport, and it moves you along at like two miles an hour or whatever else and takes you out of the park, and then there's ones that bring you in. And so my son saw one that was opposite of the direction he was going. There's a big sign that says, warning, do not go the wrong way, right? But he was, at, I think at the time, probably about uh, 12, 
So his IQ was at the lowest ever in his life. And so he sees the sign, right? And he decides he's just going to go booking, and he's going to run up that conveyor belt. He's going to beat the people mover, right? So he's running as fast as he can, and we're maybe, I don't know, 50 yards away, and all of a sudden we just see him <laughs> just crashes on the people mover and starts getting drugged back, right? And so wipes out, doesn't pay attention to the sign, and there's some guy behind me from Arkansas, and he suddenly says, well, there you go. If you're going to be dumb, you better be tough, <laughs> right? If you're going to be dumb, you better be tough. And I'm like, I want to turn that into a plaque. All right, so, and that is true. If you want to be dumb in life, you better be tough, right? But if you want to be smart, you want to be wise, the rules of the Lord, man, these are righteous and altogether good for you. I mean, it, it comes back again to the commandments, the rules, the laws, everything. It's all for our good, and so this summer, as we're doing all of this, we want to keep it in mind, you know, yes, I want to see God in the world, but also I want to heed God in his word, and I want to trust him with this, because again, they are righteous altogether. They are healthy for my existence and being. And so our walk away today, the thing I want you to think about for the summer is number three in your notes. Enjoy God's goodness by obeying the Lord of world and word right? That's that simple. Enjoy God's goodness by obeying the Lord of word, world and word. In fact, this is where David kind of wraps it up, at least for us this morning in verse 10. He says, these commands, these words of God, this message that God hollers at us both in the world and the word, man, these are more to be desired than gold. It should be more precious to us than those things. It's better than refined gold. It's sweeter than honey that is dripping from the honeycomb. And by these, it says, your servant is warned, and in keeping them, there is great reward. Now, why is God's revelation both in world and in word so sweet and so rich for our lives? Again, it's what we saw, because they warn and they reward, right? When we listen to God, we are warned, don't go down roads that are going to hurt, go down roads that are going to help. That's the place you want to be. You want to be in the circle of blessing, when I was raising my three little kids that aren't so little anymore, we had on our refrigerator uh, the circle of blessing, right? So it's just a circle, and there was their pictures inside the circle. And we would always tell them, man, when you're where God wants you to be, and you're doing what God wants you to do, and you're listening to how God has called you to live, you're in the circle of blessing. That is a great place to be. But sometimes our kids would be, you ready? They'd be naughty. They wouldn't always listen to mom and dad. And so we had the circle of blessing. And inevitably, it was always going to be my son, Gray, that was going to test those limits. And so uh, we would say, Gray, you want to stay in the middle of the circle of blessing, but if he did something he wasn't supposed to do, it was real simple. You would have to move to the edge of the circle of blessing. That was kind of like your warning, you know, like, man, you're right there. You want to stay inside the circle of blessing because it's happy inside the circle of the blessing. You don't get in trouble inside the circle of blessing. So if you go to the line of the circle of blessing, it's kind of a drag. And the way we did this is we would tell the kids they had to do it. So if Gray did something bad, we go, oh, Gray, you got to move yourself to the line inside the circle of blessing. Well, I don't want to move myself to the circle of blessing. <laughs> you know, and he move himself to the line, right? But then if he was... Not again, and he, and he, you know, just kind of escalated. We say, "Oh, buddy, you 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 have to go outside of the circle of blessing," and then that was, that was terrible, right? Because then you got to do the walk of shame to the kitchen, you know, and just move yourself out of the circle of blessing, right? And it was always so traumatic, right? It was just like, "Oh, buddy, now you're outside of the circle of blessing. This is so sad." Isn't it sad out there? Your sisters are huddled together with the warmth of their embrace and you're, no, you know, we wouldn't do it that bad, but, um, <clears throat> right? And, and then the, the way you went back into the circle of blessing was real simple. You, you, just, you just said, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I was wrong and I repent. You didn't have to work yourself back into the circle of blessing. You just had to acknowledge that what got you out of the circle of blessing was not playing by God's rules, uh, 
brought forth by your parents. And then when you did that and we prayed together, you went right back into the circle of blessing. But it reminded our kids always as they got older. To this day, they actually redid this like two years ago in our house. You imagine a bunch of teenagers. They just knew, I'm just going to move myself. All right. (laughs) All right, repent. All right, back in the circle of blessing. All right, so, you know. But it's a good reminder for all of us that where we want to be is in the circle of God's blessing. And the best place we can do that is to listen to his laws, his commands, his rules, his statutes, to see him in creation, remember his bigness, and remember his goodness toward us. Now, for some of you, maybe you go, man, I'm here today, I came with friends, I came with family, I was invited, and and I, I, I don't even know this God of Psalm 19. I don't know Jesus in a personal and intimate way. Uh, Well, we're here in part, not in total, but in part because we want people to know Jesus and to have a relationship with him that's unique and special and shapes all of life, puts you in the circle of God's blessing. Right? And so, man, if you feel like today you go, I, I want to know more about this Jesus, or maybe I want to follow this Jesus, there's a couple of things you can do to let us know. One is we're going to have people up here in the front after the service that you can talk with and pray with and get more information from, and they would love to talk with you. That's one thing. The other thing is maybe when you came in here, you downloaded our app because that's our encouraged first step for you. Everything's about taking the next step in our journey of faith. And so maybe you downloaded the app, and in there, there is a section called next steps and you can tap on there i want to follow christ i want to follow jesus and and man we're going to contact you immediately and let you know what that means so that you can have that opportunity but maybe some of you man you're you're christians you're followers of jesus you're already on that journey but you know this summer uh, it's going to be easy to be distracted you're going to see a lot of god in the world but maybe it's going to be a little bit of a struggle for god in the word and so i've put together just a very easy to uh, kind of Keep up with reading plan for Psalms in the summer. And you go, I just want to be a part of that. I just want to be a part of the reading plan of Psalms through the summer. It's just going to be like one Psalm a week, so it's not going to be heavy duty, right? It's going to be just some kind of choice Psalms that are hopefully going to encourage you, remind you, and inspire you to keep the focus on him this summer so that he might guide, lead, and direct your life. Because again, everything is about, man, how can we grow? How can we know? How can we learn so that we might relate, be close to, and enjoy our God all the time? So let's go ahead and pray together as we close up. Jesus, I thank you again for your word today. I thank you for the kids with us in the room today. It's just a special Sunday when we can have all the kids in here. And I thank you for all of the teachers and leaders and setup crews and everybody that works so hard all the time. And such a blessing even to be able to give them a little bit of a chance to just, uh, you know, it, it take in and be a part of the body in kind of a standardized way. It's all the way around. I am grateful. And I thank you again for the grace you continue to show us. And I pray throughout this summer that we will see you in the world. We won't just get so enamored with the stuff of the world that we will forget the great maker of all the stuff in the world. And I pray that we also take time to read our kids' Bibles or read our adult Bibles and to take in your word, to listen to the Bible, to listen to different things about the Bible because your word is strength and you've given it to us for our good. And so we love you, Jesus, so much. We thank you for what you've done for us and what you continue to do in your awesome name. Amen.